Welcome to the 96th Academy Awards, coming to you live from the Dolby Theater in Ovation, Hollywood, Los Angeles, California. Are you watching? Is the show still relevant? Why do you care? Would you change it if you could? I've got all the questions and some answers. Thanks for joining me today. Hey, I'm Cheryl Lynn. If you haven't subscribed yet, do so and ding the bell too. Now let's talk. Why is this relevant? And I have such a passion for storytelling, for filmmaking, that I think we should talk about this. Okay, right now, in a few short minutes, people are already arriving there at the Dolby Theater, down the red carpet, finding their seats next to a seat filler for the 96 Academy Awards. But here's the question that I'd love to hear from you. How many of the 10 best pictures did you see in theater? Let me know in the comments. I'll tell you, I saw Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer. I saw that in theater and I've got some commentary on it. Here's why I'm making my broadcasts. <clears throat> One, yes, I think the show has become bloated and quasi irrelevant. <gasps> And I say that as a person who is passionate about filmmaking, passionate about storytelling, and I want this to go on. I'd just like to see a little change. How about you? So that means is what you're seeing nominated even relevant to you and your family? And did you spend any money on it? And the money part is really important because the industry is coming off of the strikes. WGA and SAG from last year, we're going into the possibility of the IATSE, the Teamsters, all the below the lines, possibly willing to strike AI still at the front of the conversation. So here's where you come in. Do you, as just the average mom who buys tickets for the family to have entertainment, is it representative of what you want to spend your time and your money on? Okay, lots of questions. Let me know in the comments, but let's go down right here. The best, there's 10 films nominated for best picture, and I only saw Oppenheimer. So I'm going to go to those right now for best picture. And you let me know, did you see American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie? The Holdovers. The Holdovers I want to see. Killers of the Flower Moon. We're going to get to that next. Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, The Zone of Interest. I've seen one of those. The others weren't relevant or worth my time or my money to take my family. True story. Like we're just waiting for it to be on the streamer. Yeah, to be on Prime because I have a Prime subscription. No, I'm not doing the movie theater at home. I'm not paying the 20 bucks to rent it. You know why? It's not relevant to my family. And I'm just curious because going forward, I feel like come the 100th Academy Award, we have a chance between the 96th and the 100th to really revolutionize what content is made and how it's distributed. And I'm always talking about this. I hope you're gonna follow along to be able to comment below who was your pick for best actor? We'll go to that right now. Oh, we're going to talk about uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. So right here, best actress in a leading role, Annette Benning for Nayad. Did you see that? Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon. We're going to talk about that. Go boop. Sandra Hewler in Anatomy of a Fall, Carrie Mulligan from Maestro, and... Emma Stone from Poor Things. I really think that performance <laughs> is best at the AVNs. So here we think. Why I wanted to talk about Killers of the Flower Moon, I started reading the book and it's so traumatic what happened to the First Nations people, the Osage tribe, that I haven't been able to finish reading it because it is devastating. And that is part of the history of the United States. I feel like there's often the saying, as California goes, so goes the nation. But I'd like to add to that. As the First Nations 
the people, the Native Americans go, so goes the nation, the United States. And I love seeing that the Osage are performing their song, speaking their native tongue. I love seeing Lily Gladstone, I believe, quote me, fix me if I'm wrong. Lily Gladstone is the first Native American actress to be nominated for an Oscar. High five, Lily, so proud of you. Eventually, I think I will watch the film. Uh, the books are always better than a film, so it's possible that I got the brunt of the trauma of how that Osage tribe was treated by the federal government. It's possible I already got that whew, out of the system. And then the film, it's almost three hours. The film will tell a version of that story. You know why all of this is important to me? Because I believe that the family altar can be restored through good moral entertainment. I feel like the envelope has been pushed so far and there is so much violence and immorality that it speaks to a population that may not be building the best interest for the nation going forward. This is strong talk, strong talk for a Sunday afternoon, but I deeply care about the nation. I care about the people and I feel like what we're watching, what goes into your eyes and into your ears, it has an effect on your spirit. And it's possible that what we're watching now defiles the spirit. And I don't say this as like an IBLP. Uh, I watched the documentary, Shiny Happy People, and I was gobsmacked. That's probably, a, it's probably a completely, Mm, yeah, it's a different video, and I don't know that I want to make that video, but here's what I do want to make, and I want to make this short. I would love to know in the comments, are you watching the Oscars? Yes or no? Is the Academy Awards Oscar relevant anymore? There was a time back in film school I deeply desired an Oscar, and now I don't think I do. Not now as what's being created. I don't think that speaks to me, so I don't necessarily want an award for that. I want to award best picture, best cinematography, best actor, best actress to stories that are positive, encouraging, uplifting, that are moral, that speak to high, high value in entertainment, that doesn't defile, degrade, or bring down. That's my point. Whew, that was a lot to get off my chest. Thanks for still watching. Best Actress in a Supporting Role nominees, Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer, Danielle Brooks for The Color Purple. I don't think that film needed to be remade because the first is perfection. Personal opinion. America Ferreira for Barbie, Jodie Foster for Nyad, Devine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. Best actor in a supporting role, Sterling K. Brown, I love his works. In American Fiction, Robert De Niro, Killers of the Flower Moon, Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer, Ryan Gosling and Barbie, and Mark Ruffalo and Poor Things. Haven't, mm. Best actor in a leading role, Bradley Cooper for Maestro. I do want to see Maestro. Coleman Domingo in Rustin. Paul Giamatti, who's one of my favorite actors in The Holdovers. Killian Murphy in Oppenheimer. Is it Cillian or Killian? Forgive me. In Oppenheimer and Jeffrey Wright in American Fiction. Okay, the 96 Academy Awards. I am going to get the highlights on YouTube later. I'm not watching. I just have things to do and... I just hope that everybody who is attending has a beautiful event, that it's memorable. I've been seeing some photos and that the fashion is something that is honoring to the talent. Going forward, I feel like the Academy Awards have a chance to redeem themselves, that entertainment has a chance to redeem themselves. Do you want to see great action where there is, it's, I got two, two thoughts here. Do you want to see great action films? I wish that MI6, which is nominated for Best Effects, 
I wish that they were nominated for Best Picture because it has great action, beautiful storytelling, strong characters. They're moral, even though there's some bad guys in there, the, there. There's a good guy who wins at the end. And I think that's what we need to be seeing now. We need to see triumph over tragedy. We need to see the hero win or the heroine win. It's my strong personal opinion. In cinematography, El Conde is a nominee or Edward Lachman for El Conde, Rodrigo Prieto for Killers of the Flower Moon, Matthew Labatik for Maestro, Hoyt Van Hoytema for Oppenheimer, Robbie Ryan for Poor Things. The cinematography is so important because there's so much that goes into how the image comes forward and the image that goes in is so impactful. I'll put a community post up that asks these questions because I'd love to know from you. Maybe, maybe I'm the minority who wants positive, encouraging, moral content. Maybe you do too. I think that the entertainment industry is on the precipice of a radical shift and that distribution and production can be co-opt like all the littles can band together, kind of like how the Amish put up a barn. I think the little independent storytellers, filmmakers, producers and directors and writers can co-op instead of raising a barn to raise a film and get it to the market that can deliver it to the audience so that you can feel good seeing it personal opinion. I'd love to know your opinion. Uh, costume design. There's a nominee, Barbie for Jacqueline Duran, Jacqueline West for Killers of the Flower Moon, Janty Yates and Dave Crossman for, I bet that's pronounced Yanti, for Napoleon, Ellen Mirojanik for Oppenheimer, Holly Waddington for Poor Things. The costume design is really a significant department and very important because once the talent puts on, it's like putting on the character and it helps them step into their emotions, their life and who they are. The costume is so important. So is hair and makeup. And you know, they don't have an Oscar for it yet, but I think there should be an Oscar for hair and makeup, personal opinion. You know, I'm gonna put my phone down and just focus on you for a moment because I could really use your help, your feedback and input. Let me know, what do you wanna watch? What do you wanna pay for? What do you feel good about investing your time and resources, your finances into? How do you pick what to watch? If you have little kids and you had to watch the animated film choices, you did not have much to choose from. And I just, would love your feedback and input because it helps me get clarity on the co-oping of production. As the Amish raise a barn, I believe that the independents, God bless those studios, I feel like it's time for the independent to rise up, to co-op talents together, to be able to create stories that are positive, moral, and uplifting. <clears throat> Excuse me. I did not watch Poor Things because I read a interview with the director where he said that there needed to be more graphic sex on the big screen. And I felt like that's what those old video arcades that Paul Rubin was caught masturbating in. That's where that type of content has a home to be distributed. I don't know that it needs to be on streamers unless it was on Pornhub or on the big screen down at the AMC. I was going to say the Regal, but Regal actually had to file bankruptcy and many of those theaters are closing. Again, I implore you, tell me in the comments, what do you want to see? How can film production be co-opt and get more stories? Do you remember this Thursday? Bing, bing. If you didn't go watch that video, we read from the gray list, Skyborn, and that writer, Jave, has tremendous credits in the industry, and yet he hasn't got this story told yet. But it's a great story. 
I think there are so many amazing stories waiting on the shelf for life to be breathed into them. Yet the studios are so focused. I think that their model is not sustainable anymore. And hence, here comes AI, here comes another strike. I am looking for answers and I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear the average I consume content opinion as much as the opinion of the person who works in the industry because the $200 million budget film from the studio, it's not sustainable, my opinion. The audience still wants content. Can, I? here's what I'll leave you with. Can the industry of entertainment pivot and begin to co-op resources to get stories that are valiant, heroic, encouraging, emotional, moving, memory-making, made and told and to the audience and be able to make a profit so that how you, the people has to make money because that's how you make another is this one is profitable and it pays for the next one and then the next one and it goes and it goes and it goes. I'd love to hear from you. The 96th Academy Awards is going live right now. I'm going to catch the highlights on YouTube and I strongly encourage you honor your values, your morality with your viewing, with your dollars, and with your time. Time and viewing are two things because you can choose to spend your time viewing that broadcast or you can choose to view something else. There's so many choices. I could probably wax on in this subject forever, but I wanted to keep this short and I just wanted to come to you and I hope that it's a beautiful event, but I really think we are in the crux and crucible of remaking, reimagining the entertainment industry and how stories are made and how they're told. And I really want to hear from you. Congratulations to all of the nominees and double congratulations to the winners. I'll be watching the highlights on YouTube later <laughs> next to this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, say in the comments what you're thinking, what you're feeling. If there's something you want a video made about, let me know and I'll be happy to make it. I'll see you in the next one. I'm Cheryl Lynn and remember, you are worth it.